Dear students, today I am going to discuss about an important phenomena of light and that is diffraction. What is diffraction? Look, we all know that the light propagates along straight line. But here is some different things happened. This is a source and light propagates along the straight line. When we placed a sharp edge in the direction of propagation of the light, we follow that the light change its direction at the point of the incident of the sharp edge. Actually, this is the geometrical shadow region and it will be the completely dark. But we see that this region is not completely dark. Some illumination of light to some extent is present in the shadow region and this phenomena is known as diffraction of light. Now there is a question that how is it possible that means why the light change its direction from the sharp edge and this is explained very nicely by Fresnel and he gave a satisfactory explanation of the diffraction by using Huygens principle in conjugation with the principle of superposition. According to Huygens, each point on the primary wavefronts acts as the source of secondary wave. The mutual interference of these secondary waves, that means from here, here, here and here, derived from a particular wavefront, this is a particular wavefront, produces the phenomena of diffraction. Thus, we may say that the diffraction is a special kind of interference of light. That is the interference of the secondary waves coming from the different parts of the same wavefront. What is Fresnel's half period Jones? To find the answer of this question, at first, we consider a plane wavefront A, B, C, D of wavelength lambda propagating in the right direction. A, B, C, D arrowhead represents its direction and P is an external point. We draw a perpendicular P O from P to A, B, C, D. Then we draw the concentric spheres of radii B plus lambda by 2, B plus 2 lambda by 2 and B plus N lambda by 2 taking P as a center. If we assume that the spheres are cutted by the plane wavefront, then we get the section of the sphere as circles of different radii which are shown in the diagram. The space occupied by the first circle is called first half period zone and the annular space between the 
adjacent radii is called the second apparatus joints and so on. Now we calculate the area of the nth half period zone. The nth half period zone is the annular space between the circles of radii Rn and Rn minus 1. Now Rn equal to O On and that is equal to root over this and R n minus 1 is equal to this. Then the area of the nth half period zone will be this form pi R n square minus R n minus 1 square and if we put this value and then calculate we get a simple form as pi lambda b which is independent of n and is it is the order number. That means the area of each half period zone is constant which means the area of each half period zone is equal but actually the area of the half period zones increases as order number increases. Now we show that the resultant amplitude at P due to the all half period zones is uh, approximately the half of the amplitude of the first half period zone. The resultant amplitude at P will be the sum of the individual amplitude due to the each half period zone. If D1 D2, D3, Dn be the amplitudes of first, second, third and nth half period zone, then we may write the resultant amplitude at P D equal to D1 minus D2 plus D3 dot 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 plus to the power n minus 1 D n minus sign is arise as the given zone is lambda by 2 further away from p than the previous one then we may write this is of the form look at this dn by 2 when n odd. Again we may write this as d1 by 2 plus dn minus 1 by 2 minus dn when n is even. But actually this and this is equal to d3 by 2 equal to d2. Then we may simplify the term this and this as d equal to d1 by 2 plus dn by 2 when n odd and equal to d1 by 2 plus dn minus 1 by 2 minus dn when n is even. Now if n is large, this is very large, then we may simplify both the term for odd n and for even n as d equal to d1 by 2. And as d1 is the amplitude due to the first half period zone, then we may say that the resultant amplitude at that point that is p due to the whole wavefront is equal to the half of the 
first half period zone. Again, according to Fresnel, the amplitude at P due to the waves coming from the nth zones depends on the factors below. If n be the amplitude, then it is proportional to the area of the mth zone. Area of the nth zone and proportional to 1 by distance of P from the zone. Distance of P from the zone are proportional to the obliquity QI obliquity factor 1 plus cos theta n. Now the average distance from P to nth zone will be half b plus n lambda by 2 plus p plus n minus 1 lambda by 2 equal to b plus 2n minus 1 lambda by 4. Then the amplitude will be a n proportional to 1 by b plus 2n minus 1 lambda by 4 and 1 plus cos theta n. This is the amplitude at p due to the waves coming from nth zone. Now the average distance from p to the nth zone is half b plus n lambda by 2 plus b plus n minus 1 lambda by 2 equal to b plus 2n minus 1 lambda by 4. Hence, the amplitude at p due to the nth zone will be a n proportional to 1 plus cos theta n by this factor that is b plus 2n minus 1 lambda by 4.